Welcome back to another episode of That's Major. And it is a very special episode because I have my dear friend, Terrence, with us. I want Terrence to tell you a little bit about himself uh, so you can know why he's so special and why this episode is going to be really special and educational for us. Yeah, I'm Terrence Atkins, Decatur native, Crosstown baby. <laughs> um, I'm uh, really interested in the politics. I'm a member of the ADOS Advocacy Foundation. Um, I'm not actually representing them today. I mean, it's just a conversation between me and Janari, but that's part of the stuff I do. I actually ran for City Council District 2 indicator uh, in the height of the pandemic, which was really weird. It was a weird thing because people didn't want to open their doors. So, um, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. Yes. Um, I feel like this is going to be a really good episode. We're going to get into a lot of the conversation I have heard him talk about, but I felt like it would be really good conversation for us for this particular episode, just to educate us, especially with so much going on in the world these days. Um, so we're going to get into it. So Terrence, I know you know so much about politics and everything that comes with it, all that you do for our city here in Decatur, Alabama. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions so we can just, you know, kind of get into it, as we mentioned before. Um, let's start off with reparations. Mm -hmm. Let's For people who don't know, let's explain what reparations are. So in essence, reparations is a repayment for a debt that is owed. Um, this country was founded and built off the backs of our ancestors, the enslaved Africans that were brought to America. Um, and 200 years of free labor. Um, also, you know, the subjugation of our people post-slavery. Um, there has to be repayment for that. We've seen a lot of other groups receive reparations, and so we know America is capable of paying reparations to other groups. So I feel that it's time now for us to, like, organize um, and just, like, try to figure out what it is that we need as a community. So when it comes to reparations... There has to be cash payments. Cash payments is, is the first part of it. But there also has to be policy to ensure that the things that happened before don't happen again. So with reparations, there has to be a multi-generational repair done because this was done multi-generationally, right? Yes. So you have to have repayment multi-generationally. You have to have policy to protect that. Because if you give people, if you, get, if you gave us who descend from American chattel slavery, if you give us money, white America can do what it always does and mechanize white supremacy against us and bleed us dry of that money. Mm -hmm. So what we need is also protections to make sure that we don't, you know, fall back into those traps like the, our Black Wall Streets, right? Which we had more than Tulsa, more Black Wall Streets than Tulsa. So <clears throat> when I think about reparations, it's really, you know, cash payments and the policy to protect and carve us back into American society. Yes, I love the way that you just broke that down <laughs> for everybody. Um, I kind of want to go into, because you, you're talking about the reparations and them giving back to us and what we owe. Not only that, but protection, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of, it just kind of put me in mind, you know, we've been promised a lot of things like the 40 acres and the mule. Right. What does that look like now in 2023 if we were to a able? So, you know, if we were to, Thomas Piketty, who wrote um, American... I'm going to have to think of the book. I'm, we, we, can, we can edit that back in. But once mm -hmm. I think of the book, but Thomas Piketty, who's an American economist, he tabulated the numbers in like eight, 2018 to be about $20 trillion, right? So when you look at 40 acres and a mule, you look at the people who are alive today, the down payment should be around $20 trillion. And that was in like 2018 when those numbers came. So that number's steadily growing, you know, every day. So 40 acres and a mule, which was, you know, General William Tecumseh Sherman, um, he came in and with some black pastors and black civil rights leaders in Georgia, 
um, that came up with the plan to give those who were enslaved plots of land, you know, and the mule and, you know, other things that were left after the Civil War. So, you know, yeah, we need land today, but we also need the capital. We need that mule. So when I think about that or when I, you know, talk about reparations, 40 acres and a mule, uh, Cali House, who is, you know, the, the mother of, you know, all of this, you know, with so many others. Um, it just brings me to a point where, you know, I, I can get excited about what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like the ancestors that put in the work before us, like they can see it matriculate, you know, into actual fruition. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I feel like we definitely have it here in America to give to us Mm -hmm. because they already, you know, pay the Japanese their reparations. So what's your take on that? So, you know, going back to, you know, how everything is done in America, the Japanese internment reparations comes off the back of H.R. 40 and um, John Conyers, who was the senator who put H.R. 40 together. This was nine the late 80s. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they received their reparations because I feel like anyone who's been harmed um, deserves redress. But, like, when when is it our turn? You know what I'm saying? And I definitely agree. I was just thinking, like, I'm not going to say I dislike that. And, and, of course, you know, that's why I said this is such a special um, show because you're so educational on it. You know, you're given <laughs> the knowledge that we need. But I didn't think it was right. You know, knowing that other people, other, um, what's the word I'm looking for, race, have gotten theirs, and we actually built, you know, well, when I say we, I'm talking about our ancestors, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, the, our, our color of our skin. Our, our, our lineage. Yes. We yeah. built America. So right. why are other races getting their reparations before because I mean, it's this. This is quintessential America, right? Like, in order to show this great face of faith to the world, they do things. They do easier things for other ethnic groups of people, right? It's easier to do reparations for Japanese internment. It's easier for you to do, you know, reparations for other people. Not saying it's, that they don't deserve. It's easier for you to do Guam reparations. It's easier for you to do Native American reparations because of the things that have been said before. So, like, I feel like at this time, like, like I feel like at this time, we have to, like, pick up the mantle of our, our ancestors because, you know, at first it was freedom, right? Mm-hmm. It was just freedom. It was just the able to breathe, being able to breathe free, free air and not have someone, you know, down your back. But then white supremacy mechanizes. Then you have, you know, the, the fight for civil rights, human rights, right? The rights to be able to enjoy the fruits of American labor that you're putting into. Now it's like our time to get that financial, mm-hmm. you know, type of thing because America's headed to, which is already probably here, it's, a, it's headed to a place of inheritance, mm-hmm. right? It's what do you have already in the bank? You know what I'm saying? Because of the prices... Uh, inflation, all this stuff. Like, Bitcoin. you you know, <laughs> don't get me started on Bitcoin. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's so much, like, everything is just skyrocketing. Prices are just skyrocketing. Like, we, we can't survive in the country that our ancestors built. And I feel like it's time for us to, like, really organize and, like, come together on what it is, you know, what we need in Decatur, what we need in Alabama, what we need as a nation, you know? And we need, this is why it's important for us to get the knowledge out there so we can start banding together and pulling together to to have something done, just as our ancestors did. Right. They fought the right and they, you know, got us to a certain point. And it's like, we got to that point and kind of relaxed. Yes. And we too relaxed. Yes. We too chill. Yes. No, we got to keep it going for our, ourselves, do. for our children, for the next generation until we... You know, just keep us selling as a people. Right. And one of the things, you know, I'm I'm a member of the Adolph's Advocacy Foundation, which, you know, Adolph's is American descendants of slavery. You know I was about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's it's American descendants of slavery. It's, you know, our lineage, our ethnic group that um that kind of we we kind of 
coined the term, Yvette Carnell, who's the, the founder of the movement, she coined the term. And one of the things she always says is that it takes longer to heal a wound than to inflict a wound. Oh, I like that. It takes longer to heal the wound than to inflict a wound, wound right like so you when you think about like you said we got we got to do this for our our future like our children our grandchildren all this the great nieces nephews like to keep our lineage alive right so we have to make those sacrifices that others made for us and like you said we have gotten complacent we have gotten comfortable because we can go and apply for a job we can apply for a house we can apply for school you know we can do all of these things that our ancestors weren't able to do and and we've gotten complacent. We've gotten high off the hog, you know? I agree. And, you know, to kind of um, segue just a little bit, just a tad bit, you know, we make up, and when I say we, what you say, Adolf? Adolf, Adolf yeah. American descendants of slavery, Adolf. American descendants of slavery. Mm -hmm. We make up 13% of America population, mm -hmm. right? And majority of the population in prison is... Mm -hmm. What What's your take on that? It's, you know, it's a direct correlation to slavery. Um, when I think about Alabama and I think especially Birmingham, the steel city, right? Mm -hmm. The reason it's the steel city is because of convict leasing, right? There was, a, there's a, you know, Birmingham is rich with iron ore. So that's what they were down there mining. And the start of that was convict leasing, right? Mm -hmm. So you see, you know, who... Who is the population that you can beat up on, who you can subjugate and who you've continued to subjugate? And how can white supremacy fine tune its mechanization? You know what I'm saying? Yes. And when you couple that with America being built on free labor, you have to keep that population. So the natural choice is the people who descend from those who you got the free labor from in the first time. Right, mm -hmm. so I, you know, Kay Ivy is <laughs> Kay Ivy. You know, she's yeah. down here holding funds, and <laughs> <laughs> Kay Ivy's down Kay here holding Ivy. funds. She's holding people hostage in these prisons. She's, you know, like the the parole board has been changed. Like all of the quote unquote positive things that were happening in. You know, getting people out like a couple of years ago, like that's not happening anymore. Even with COVID, even with all of the things like nonviolent offenders right. can't get out of prison. They cannot get paroled in Alabama. So, I mean, it's a direct link to our ancestors, to the lineage that we come from. And that's why, you know, as a mother of young, you know, black males, I try to educate them on why it's important for you to follow the rules and, and you know, do what you're supposed to do because it's going to be harder for you than it would maybe your friend of a different race. Mm -hmm. You, It's so important for you to walk that fine line, I guess, to, right. so to speak. Um, and since we're in Alabama, <laughs> another same way, just just a little bit. Um, again, this is all a very good show. I, I'm loving it. I love <laughs> how intelligent you are. Um, I want to talk since we're in Alabama, and you know, just when was that? A couple of weeks ago, we had a, a, what they call the Montgomery Broad, right? Listen, I like. Uh the Montgomery Sweet Tea Party. That's what I've been saying. That's what you've been calling it? Okay, the Montgomery Sweet Tea Party. That's good. That's so good. <laughs> they, um, I like the fact that they, you know, the people of our color, band our, our to, lineage, our lineage, mm -hmm. band together to help another. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be my take on it. I, mm -hmm. I, I can appreciate us getting like, no, you're not going. But that's not not today. You know, right, type of right. type of energy. So, what what is your opinion or take or points when uh, it comes to to that? So the the place where it happened was actually a slave port. Mm, like it's where they brought slaves in. You know, to sail in the Montgomery area at the riverboat. Where, yeah, like right it was where that yeah, happened. There's actually like that. a marker not too far from where that brawl happened. So like I'm, I'm with everybody else. The ancestors was red. The, the ancestors was tired. Like I feel like this is this is like our time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when you look back in history, like 
everybody had a moment, everybody had a role to play. And I feel like this is our moment. Like if there wasn't galvanizing enough of us to be for, you know, it, this this is for the people that's like black people need to stick together. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. Like we do when it's necessary, but like sometimes it, it's it, it ain't that necessary. Like sometimes some of the stuff that that's happening, we that's a whole nother story. But like we when it's time for us to stick together, we stick together. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I'm glad that it happened where it happened right here in Alabama, right there on that slave port. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It was just like full circle to me. Oh man, I didn't even I didn't know that that was a slave port. Um, I think I mean of course. Now you you white men white it was a white group jumping on a black man like no we're not <laughs> gonna sit and just watch you hurt one of our own right period. <laughs> so that was good. I think we need to keep that same energy. So we can get the reparations that we need. Mm-hmm. We got to take the energy political. Yes, yes. Get more. Like it's make you inspire me to be more, you know, political. <laughs> My husband's very into politics. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know they touched, you know, before on the previous episode about that. But I wanted to, you know, just get your take on it yeah. um, because it's important. It's important that we keep the energy, get what we need, keep banding together, keep the. Torch going. Yeah. Pass the torch. Pass they the they torch. passed it to us and we got relaxed. No, we gotta yeah. keep running that race. We do. We gotta get what's four hours. So I mean, you know, we're gonna keep growing, we're gonna keep getting the knowledge out there. And I this I just love um again, I just love you. I love the fact that you came. <laughs> I love you too, the, the, the intelligence, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so to piggyback on something that you said about white supremacy. Let me just first say that we love everybody, Mm. um, all races. This is just a show where we want to educate, give out knowledge, and, you know, kind of build our race. But Mm -hmm. we love everyone. But let's tell them, you know, just for the ones who don't know, what is white supremacy in 2023? So in 2023... White supremacy it, it's, it's, it's not the spit on you at the the counter at the lunch counter, right? It's not you know the KKK riding down the street. It's more mechanized. It's you know when you go get an appraisal for your home, right? And it's appraised less, right? Mm-hmm. It's the red line that happened in your community that was you know quote unquote fixed, but it's the fact that your home is still not valued at market rate. Mm. So it's not, you know, Billy Bob or, you know, Ken or whoever you work with. It's the system that, you know, they allow they allow to happen, especially here in Alabama. Right. Like we're under Republican governor. We're under pretty much Republican control, even though, you know, the Senate is Democratic and the president is Democrat. Right. Mm-hmm. What is allowed to happen here is people vote against their best interests. So they vote against Medicaid expansion, right? They vote against, you know, any type of funding coming extra to Alabama from the federal government, right? So you have Kay Ivey who is championing, championing, you know, rural internet access, right? But, you know, the Republicans from our state who are in the House and the Senate voted against it. Mm. So... The fact that you have, you know, our governor championing something that the people in her party voted against, that's a form of white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? That's good. So, you know, when we talk about that, it's it, it's not to, to bash white people for being mean to us. It's to say that there are systems in place that you let allow happen. And because you don't want to discuss, you know, the sins of your father or the sins of the past in this state they fester and they grow. So we have to like, you know, get to the root of this problem. You know, the root is white supremacy. I agree. And that's another reason why it's important for us to come together. You know, we spoke about the Montgomery um, sweet, sweet tea sweet, party. Sweet tea <laughs> party. And with the Montgomery Sweet Tea Party to challenge it. You know, we need to be able to join, like, the organization that you're a part of. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can you tell our listeners or our viewers, you know, how to come be a part of that? So 
Because it's so important. Politics, like you said, they're voting against things that is going to help us. And mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, in our community, we don't even vote. We don't know. We don't have the knowledge. It's so many things that we have to, that we can do, that mm -hmm. we got to start doing, that we have to do right. to move forward. Um, so, you know, one way to start off, I would say, is definitely, you know, joining the organization. So tell us how. So you can go to joinados.com. Join com and you can sign up for to become a general member. Um, the general member fees is sixty five dollars. You know that's your yearly fee, and that comes with all types of resources. You know it's going to come with. We have some things coming up. Um, I can't discuss too much. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know though that that money that you pay is no different than the NAACP. It's no different than the Urban League. If you're in sorority, if you're in a bike club, you know these fees are you know less than most of those so what we offer for that $65 is a lot so you can go to join ados.com and you can sign up um, we'll be opening chapters um, pretty soon you know I can't say when but we'll we'll be opening up chapters so first get that general membership start getting that education because voting to me, voting is the end process, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you have to understand what you're voting for. You have to know who you're voting for. You have to have your own personal agenda, right? So that you can see if I'm voting for a person who aligns with my agenda or my community's agenda, right? So one way to do that is, you know, to join with like-minded people who are already on the ground doing this type of work. And that's good. And, it, and it, like you said, it's going to educate you. I just want to touch again. It's ADOS.com, yep. which stands for, and I just love that, uh, <laughs> American Descendants of Slavery. I love that. ADOS. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we are ADOS people. We're just trying to rise our community up, the culture, as people say, you know, these mm -hmm. days. Or, you know, we just want to move forward. Um, we're speaking, you know, before... And we talked about Georgia, right? Now tell me what's going on with Georgia. What's your take on that? With, with Donald Trump? With, or what's going on in Georgia? With uh, You know, I kind of heard something about um, they're trying to move us out when I say us. Oh, you know, or, Atlanta. You know, yeah. The, yeah. So yeah, the, the gentrification is, is mad wild in Atlanta. Um, Atlanta has the highest inequ income inequality in the nation. Um, you know, it's... it's I can't remember if it's higher or it's the second highest compared to Nigeria. So in Atlanta, what you see is, like, we, we hyped Atlanta up, right? Mm -hmm. We hyped the South up, like, houses are cheap, Atlanta's popping, and we did that, and people listen. Like, we move the culture, we move the world. Like, ADOS people, like, the things that we do move the world, and people listen. So... Uh, you know, you see this resurgence of people moving back into cities, you know, more more or less, they don't want to do the suburban living. They want everything to be at their fingertips, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see that in Atlanta, like especially in the downtown area. Um, I was there not too long ago. You can just see like the, the dilapidated buildings in certain areas and the, the build up. I was on, I think it was Alabama Street. It was either Alabama or Mitchell. But, like, I'm walking through, and, like, there's some, some old buildings that need to be, you know, refurbished and stuff like that. But I'm looking down the street, and I see the Mercedes Benz Dome, right? Mm -hmm. You see Phillips Arena, right? And you just think about, like, all of the people that are in between there, That's right? Good. Yeah. So... It's it's happening everywhere, all of our major cities, and I see it happening here. Like even in Decatur, like I see what they're trying to do in Crosstown. Like I see them tearing down buildings. I see like when they tore down George W. Braxton the Masonic Lodge Hall, like it cleared out an entire block. Like that was the last building left on that block. You know what I'm saying? So I see them slowly, slowly creeping in to Crosstown to do what they're doing everywhere else. We can say it way. And two, because you know, there's this new thing called spirituality, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to say way into that? We can. <laughs> I mean, because we're talking about the ancestors, right? Yeah. And people, but then we have to go into religion and all of that. But I feel like I feel like we could we can just have that conversation. Like we don't we don't have to really go in that it. that in depth into it, like. But there are so many people now that's saying they're spiritual or spirituality, and it's right. not really 
Uh, you know, there was a time when you say you're spiritual, we're thinking strictly Christianity, right? Right, right. But we're not talking about Christianity. Right. We have people now building altars to worship their ancestors, to gain power, and I think it's real. I, you know, I think it is too. Like, I think with, with a lot of things, like, if you if you believe in it enough, it'll it'll be real to you. Like, I do... Read a, a little bit about hoodoo and like you know old Black American practice, practices and certain ATRs, not that many. Um, but I feel like you know some of the stuff is in the Bible. You know, burning candles and incantations and incense. things like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. incense, making offerings to God. Like those things were in the Bible. Like I feel like, especially the beginning of <laughs> the beginning of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Like. That's conjure. Like he just made something out of nothing with his hands, you know, and making man out of dirt, like parting the water, separating the the light and the dark. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even though it's a Christian Christianity thing, like the the spiritual practice of hoodoo is like based in Christianity mm-hmm. because of like slavery and the fact that you had to hide a lot of this stuff. So like when you talk about black Americans and especially ADOS people in comparison to like those of the Caribbean and other places where they do like voodoo and Santeria and Palameyambe and different things like that, ours is like hidden in Christianity where those are more hidden in Catholicism and other religions, right? So, you know, I... It's it's a weird balance for me because I'm a Christian, right? Mm-hmm. I go to church, I sing in the choir, I do like all this regional and district stuff, but at the same time, like my ancestors did this too, you know. For me, I think um, when it comes, like I'm a Christian, but I really feel like there's universal laws mm-hmm. that just work. For example, you can say. Um, Affirmations, but then the Bible says, you know, you speak those things, you know, that aren't although they're, you know, as they are. As they I think, are, yeah. yeah. And we're speaking, you have to tell yourself and you can speak things into existence mm-hmm. because we have that power, right? right? So that's real. There's universal laws that I think other people use, you know, that works mm-hmm. because it just comes from the creator and he, right. God created everything. Um, I'm going to tell you something my husband had told me because I was asking him, you know, with some stuff. And I said, you know, do you think, you know, you could speak to the dead or, you know, the dead can talk? And he said, Mm -hmm. well, the Bible said don't. So it's definitely possible if you're telling us not to. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, those type of things. um, I just think, I just personally think you have to be careful with what you're doing. Yeah. I think it's important to have a relationship with God. You know, mm-hmm. I think people have different gifts. There is certain power and things that you can get into out mm-hmm. here. Um, but you want to be protected. I know the blood of Christ protects me. You know right. what I'm saying? So, but do I speak things? Do I say affirmations? Do I do research and see that some things are just real? Yes, I just right. do it in the name of, you know, my relationship with God in the name of Jesus. So, right. so that's where I'm, I'm at with it. You know, and, and I, I, I'm with you too, right? Like, certain things, like, you just don't play with. Mm-hmm. So, like, I feel like if, and, and in most cases, like, when it comes to, you know, spiritual, like spiritual realm and stuff like that, like if it's not coming to you or if it's not something that is natural, like you don't need to be doing it. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I feel like that's where people people get messed up, like going and seeking and, and doing all this other stuff. Like you have to have your own spiritual journey, right? But like at some point, you have to be real, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's what a lot of people now, they're not being real. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like the manifest culture, right? Because it, you ain't like, I just think people have renamed stuff from the Bible because manifesting ain't nothing but praying. That's all it you know is. And believing and having faith. And believing and having faith, faith. that it's going to happen. Manifesting and, and faith is like on the same level. Yeah. And then, you know, when it comes to the Bible, faith without work is dead. That part. So if you're not getting up and actually doing the things that you need to do, all of this hoodoo, voodoo, santeria, like Christianity, all of this, it's not going to work for you. Like it's not going to work unless you put your party in. That's true. Um, but because there is a spiritual realm, 
there is so much you have to be mindful and have the knowledge of. Mm -hmm. You can't just go and play with certain stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, there, there's things out here. I, I do believe people, you know, mm -hmm. have different, you know, there are demons that will possess you. There, there's things out here that you should not play with. Right. And um, I just the point of us having this when it comes to spirituality, I think we would just say, you know, have your own personal relationship with God. Yeah. Let him lead you. Let him direct your steps. Yeah. Don't go out here just because it's the new thing to do, the manifesting. You know, I'm going to manifest. I'm going to say these affirmations. You have to even mm -hmm. be careful with that, even yeah. with the ones you watch, because you don't know what they background or what, you know, what they're mm -hmm. doing. You know, like you said, you know, people did offering and set up. So a lot of people take that and they twist it for their own personal game yeah which makes it evil and that's the thing like if you're doing this for personal gain like if you're doing this like if you every time you do something it's a it's for money it's for success it's for things like that nature if you're not doing protection you're not doing healing you're not clearing your roads like if you're not doing those type of things it's it's never gonna work and then you start playing with a bunch of stuff you don't know mm -hmm. so like that's why i like i i stick in my lane like i I, it's a Bible on my phone. It's a Bible under my table. It would have been a Bible in this backpack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't, and, and like, I just don't play with, with certain stuff. Now, like, I do, like, I do, you know, read about it. You know, I learn about it because I want to know what they were doing. Do I bring some of these practices? Like, sweeping your feet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, not splitting poles. Like, those are, you know. Superstitious. Yeah, yeah. those are ancient you know, eight ounce practices or whatever. Like, do I still do that? Yeah, I'm still. <laughs> Don't sweep my feet. Right. Do not sweep my feet. I'm I'm, I'm chase you down for that broom to spit on it. All right, and and, and don't wash your clothes on, <laughs> on, on New Year's. And don't, right. and don't forget to eat no black eyed peas. And that cabbage. part, yes. Like, I'm, I'm gonna do that every year because that's you know it it, it kind of connects me and back to my ancestors. You know. Right, and it, and it lasts as long for a reason. These right. things have been passed along from generation to generation for a reason. I'm right. not going to be the one. Like, if my mama said, don't do this, I'm not doing it. Like, right. it was a reason part <laughs> of, you know. Um, I pray, and I trust God, and I ask him to, to guide me. You mm -hmm. know, my husband, and I was talking about... Um, I think signs, wonders, and miracles or something one day. And I had to let them know, like, my personal relationship, you know, the way I see and talk to God or God talks to me, I can see, like, if it's something, it'd be like a confirmation, it'll stand out. Mm -hmm. Give you an example. I might see a, a, a bluebird, and I'd be like, okay, God, I've been praying about prosperity. They say that's what, the, <laughs> you know, like, okay, right. you're talking to me. That's, you know, personal for mm -hmm. me. But you have to be careful. You and so uh, I guess to... To kind of we segue into the spirituality to kind of end the show. We just want you to, when it comes to the ancestors and stuff, like just know what you're doing, get the knowledge. I don't think it's nothing wrong with reading on stuff. Again, we're Christian based, so mm -hmm. I mean you can't go wrong with believing in Jesus. I'm just saying he's been good <laughs> to me. Um, but whatever you Amen. do, get the knowledge. Make sure you're protected. You know because there there is a spiritual realm. Um, the Bible tells us to stay away from certain things for a reason. So you can't take parts out the Bible and play with them just for your personal gain. Mm -hmm. You want God to just lead you in whatever you do to direct your steps. So um, that is going to be our show tonight. We wanted to educate, you know. Uh, <laughs> We wanted to educate, you know, build our community. Definitely check out ados.com. Join ados.com. Yeah, join, <laughs> join. Come a part of the team. Help us build and move forward. Let's keep, again, that torch going. Mm -hmm.